Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at the Holocaust. Here are your goals. Um, by the end of this video, you should be able to define genocide. You should be able to list the groups that were targeted by the Nazis. Uh, you should be able to explain why the Nazis believed that the Holocaust made sense. And you should be able to describe the different stages of the Holocaust. Let's start by just talking a little bit about what the Holocaust was. Uh, the Holocaust was a genocide committed by Nazi Germany from 1933 to 1945, and that resulted in the death of uh, 10 to 12.6 million people, which is about the population of North Carolina today. Uh, genocide is defined by the UN as the deliberate destruction of a racial, ethnic, national, or religious group. And the Nazis targeted a number of different groups. Um, they targeted Jews. Uh, around between 4 and 6 million Jews were killed during the Holocaust. Uh, they all, the Nazis also targeted Soviet citizens, uh, non-Jewish Soviet citizens. So that would be, they killed 4.5 million Soviet citizens. Uh, they killed 1.5 million non-Jewish Polish citizens. Uh, they killed around 500,000 uh, Roma people. These people are also known as gypsies. They're uh, sort of a nomadic group that has lived in Europe for a, uh, a very long time. Uh, homosexuals were also targeted. Around 200,000 homosexuals were executed. And between uh, and about 100,000 physically or mentally disabled people were killed by the Nazis. And this is an incredible death toll. This is beyond anything the world had seen before in terms of the deliberate destruction of groups of people. And I think there are two natural questions to ask when you are confronted with these numbers. And uh, that is, why did this happen? And also, how could this happen? How could something that is so senseless seeming occur? And that's what we're going to be exploring in this video. So um, let's start by talking about why the Nazis did this. Why did the Nazis think the Holocaust made sense? Why did they devote so many resources to exterminating people when they could have been using these resources to try and win World War II? Uh, what, what a lot of people would argue is that the Holocaust, though it seems irrational from um, a modern perspective, is that the Holocaust can be seen as the logical outcome of Nazism's racist ideology. So what that means is that from the Nazis' perspective, they thought this all made sense because they had different beliefs about race. And so uh, let's look at some of Hitler's beliefs and see how these beliefs could lead to genocide. So Hitler believed uh, three big things that led up to the Holocaust. First, he believed, and the other Nazis also believed, that the German race was the highest form of humanity and that it needed to be kept pure at all costs. And so by keeping it pure, what they mean is that the German race should not be allowed to mix or breed with other races. Um, the second big belief held by Nazis was that certain groups, uh, the groups that just mentioned, the ones that were targeted, uh, represented a threat to the German race. Specifically, they represented a threat by um, threatening the German gene pool. Uh, they, Hitler believed that if Germans started uh, m marrying uh, other pe people of other races, that the German race would eventually be... Uh, uh, what's the word? D polluted by the genes of other races. And so these other races had to be kept away from Germans, otherwise the German race would be made um, less great. And the third belief held by Hitler is that lower races could be destroyed in order to make space for the expansion of the German race. This is the idea of living space or Lebensraum that we've talked about already. And so on the basis of these three beliefs, the Holocaust was carried out. And uh, maybe if, 
if you look at these three ideas, you can see how it would make sense to a Nazi, somebody who believed these things, uh, why it made sense to eliminate millions and millions of people. They were doing it to keep the German race pure and to make space for Germans to expand. Uh, this, these ideas were uh, widespread uh, thanks to German propaganda during the Nazi period. You can see a picture on the right there um, that shows a stereotypical Jewish man with a stereotypical German woman. And what it says is, it says the Jews uh, were always defilers of the race. So it, it's making the argument that Jews have, since the Middle Ages, been around trying to uh, pollute the German race with their Jewish genes. Um, and this was a popular idea in Nazi Germany, and it was used to justify the deportation and extermination of Jews. So now let's look at how this happened. How did, how did the Holocaust unfold? And the answer is that it unfolded gradually. Um, the Nazi policy of racial extermination developed slowly over time. When Hitler came to power, he didn't really have any idea about how exactly he was going to fix these racial problems. Um, he kind of made them up as he went. And so the first stages um, happen before World War II starts. From 1933 to 1939. And during these stages, um, all the different groups we've mentioned, uh, Jews, homosexuals, uh, disabled people, uh, Slavs, are documented, harassed. Uh, some of these groups are sterilized, that is, they're made so they cannot reproduce. This happens especially to homosexuals and disabled people. Um, and towards the end of this time period, they actually uh, start to have their property taken away by the German government. Um, so Jewish citizens are one day told that their house no longer belongs to them, but rather belongs to the Nazi government. Uh, the Holocaust enters its next stage when the war begins. Um, one reason for this is that Germany takes over Poland. And Poland has a very, very large Jewish and a very large Slavic population. And the Nazis start um, taking steps to get rid of the people, these people who live in Poland. Um, and so uh, one thing that happens is that uh, all of the, or many of the Jews in Germany and Poland are packed into small areas known as ghettos. Uh, so hundreds of thousands of people are packed into tiny little parts of cities, especially uh, out in Poland. Um, and in these places, they are kept away from German citizens, and poverty and disease are widespread in these tightly populated areas. Also, um, target groups and also political prisoners, people who don't like the Nazis, are put into forced labor camps. And in these camps, they are basically forced to work to help the German army, uh, especially making uh, am ammunition. They would go into factories and make bullets to help the German army. These, group, these people would be fed more or less starvation rations. They would be fed just enough to keep them working, but they would eventually get weak and either die of illness or be executed. Um, and the final stage of the Holocaust unfolds from 1941 to 1945, after Germany invades Russia. And what happens here is termed by Nazis as the final solution. And uh, this is basically industrial style extermination of the targeted groups. So Jews, Soviet citizens, Polish citizens are executed by the millions. This is done by setting up death camps, which are basically death factories. People are brought in on trains, put on lines that go through, that sort them into people who can work and people who cannot work. The people who cannot work are more or less instantly executed. They are taken into gas chambers and killed with poison gas. On top of this, millions of Soviet prisoners of war and citizens are not even sent to camps, but are simply massacred as the German army advances into Russia. And so those are the different stages of the Holocaust. 
Now we've got some um, images I'd like for you guys to take a look at. So these two images come from the first period of the Holocaust, where it was limited to persecution, harassment, and expropriation. That is, the government taking the stuff that belongs to citizens. So this one there on the left um, is an example of how Jewish people in Germany were documented and kept track of. So Jewish people were forced to wear a visible um, star on their clothing that would identify them as Jews at all time. And this sign there reads, whoever wears this sign is an enemy of our people. Um, so even before the camps start up, Jews are being branded as enemies of the state. Uh, on the right, you see a synagogue burning. This synagogue was burned down on the night of Kristallnacht, uh, which is roughly translated to the night of broken glass, which was an anti-Jewish riot carried out by Nazi supporters in 1938. Um, millions, of, millions of dollars worth of Jewish property was destroyed, hundreds of Jews were killed, and the Nazi government did nothing to stop these riots. Here are some images from the second stage of the Holocaust. Um, this is where uh, Jewish people were forced into ghettos and many people were forced onto labor camps. Uh, here on the left is a bunkhouse where prisoners were kept, uh, basically stacked on top of each other. And this is a picture taken at the concentration camp of Dachau, which is in southern Germany. And this was one of the major labor camps that operated uh, for most of the time that Hitler was in power. Uh, prisoners here were fed starvation rations and they often got sick because they were weak and crammed up next to each other so disease spread rapidly from prisoner to prisoner. Uh, there on the right you see a sign that was at the front of the, the gate of Dachau which reads Arbeit macht frei. What that means is work makes you free. So as people were taken into the labor camps, they were basically told that if you work hard, you could earn your freedom. Um, but really this was a sick joke, a sick lie, because really all that happened is if you worked hard, you starved more quickly and would be executed more quickly. Here are some images from the final stage of um, the Holocaust. So 1941 to 1945, when Nazi policy shifts from... Um, isolation to extermination. On the left you see people in, this is a picture, I, I don't remember exactly where the picture is from, but it's a picture of people being loaded up onto train cars. And they were packed into the train cars by the hundreds and shipped uh, like cattle being shipped to the slaughterhouse. Uh, they were shipped out to concentration camps, they were unloaded, and basic, most of them were sent immediately to be executed. Um, on the right is a picture of the gas chamber at the major death camp of Auschwitz, where more than 4 million people were executed. So uh, the people that arrived at the camp would be sorted, they would be stripped of all their clothes and belongings, and they would be told that they were going in to take showers. But what would really happen is that they would enter the showers, and out of the shower heads, instead of, um, instead of any sort of... Um, water, poisonous gas would come out and kill them all by the hundreds. And uh, this was done as if it was a factory. Millions of people died in these, in these chambers. So now the question is, who knew about this? And the depressing question is, lots and lots of people knew about it. Uh, first of all, German officials and soldiers knew. Uh, the destruction of millions of people required thousands and thousands of Germans to directly work towards this, this goal. And so there were thousands of German soldiers and German officials who were helping to carry this out. On top of this, and in a, in a sort of upsetting way, many German bureaucrats who worked for the Nazi government uh, kind of went in and worked a nine-to-five job where they would plan the operations. They would plan train movements and supplying poison gases to um, to the concentration camps. And they, they would view it as a sort of ordinary job. Uh, on top of this, the German population at large knew about it. It was impossible not to notice the disappearance of hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, 
And there were widespread reports about trains leaving to the east filled with people and coming back empty. And on top of this, the Allies knew about it. Britain and the United States knew about the camps fairly early on, but they chose not to bomb them. They could have bombed the gas chambers at Auschwitz, but instead they decided to bomb factories and airports to end the war more quickly. And the killing at the concentration camps only stopped at the very end of the war when Allied troops actually occupied Germany. Here are your goals again. Uh, please take another second and make sure you can answer these questions.